Welcome to episode 5 of the MMO tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be working on adding a tile map to our game. Uh, so before we had a camera, but we couldn't really tell that our guy was moving around. But once we have a tile map, it'll kind of uh, display as the background. Uh, and it'll make it a lot more obvious uh, which character is actually moving uh, relative to the world. So let's get started on that. Cool, so back in our MMO folder, I've actually gone ahead and made a uh, grass.png. And, um, wow, this is really small. Yeah, this is a 16 by 16 uh, sprite that is just going to represent the grass tile. Uh, and then we're going to use that uh, as the input to our tile map. And I think we'll just probably have one tile type to start. And then eventually we'll add some like procedural generation to generate an entire uh, world around different uh, biomes and tile types. But to start, let's just start with a little bit of grass. So because tile maps are fairly complicated, I'm just going to go ahead and back in our engine, I'm going to make a new package that's just for tile maps. And I'm going to call it tile map. And then in here, I'm going to make a document. We'll call it tilemap.go. And then we can open that. And we'll call it the tile map package or package tile map. So there's a lot of different ways that we can uh, build tile maps. Uh, I'm going to pick one that's I think is fairly simple and uh, is maybe extensible for future use cases. So how we're going to do it is we're going to define uh, a base type that represents uh, different tile types. And this, it's, gonna, it's just going to be called tile type. And I'm just going to make it a UN8 because I assume we're going to have less than 255 different ones. Uh, but you can make this a UN16 if you really do have an enormous amount of tiles. And then we're going to make a struct for each individual tile. And, then, and inside that struct, we're going to define it as a specific tile type. We're just going to do type tile type. Uh, and then we're also going to include a uh, sprite, pixel.sprite object uh, with it as well. Uh, that way we can just define whatever we want it to look like. Uh, the other option is we could take the tile type and look up each sprite every single time we want to render it. Uh, but uh, maybe in the future we'll do that. But for now, just to keep it simple, we'll just attach the sprite directly to the tile. So this will be our tile map struct. So let's start adding components to it. Okay, so the two components we're going to start with are going to be the tile size, and that's going to represent the dimensions of tiles and pixels. And we're just going to assume that every tile is a square. Uh, the uh, grass sprite that I showed you previously is a 16 by 16. Uh, so then once we build this tile map object, we're just going to use 16 as the tile size. Uh, the next component is the uh, 2D array, or rather 2D slice of tiles. So this will basically just uh, serve as our grid. So this will be our tile map constructor, and I'm just going to call it uh, new, just, just because our package is already called tile map. So that way when people instantiate this, they'll just do tile map dot new, and then pass in all of the data. Um, and we'll just uh, do all the work externally, pass it in here, and the tile map can kind of maintain itself. All right, so this will be our uh, so this will be our draw function, uh, and what we need to take in as a parameter is the window object because we're going to draw our tile map to the window. So then to actually go ahead and draw this, the uh, high level logic is we're basically going to loop over the entire grid of tiles. And then depending on what the sprite is for each tile, we're going to draw it into its appropriate position. So this will be our 2D array loop. And we'll basically have an X and Y coordinate that'll index into our tiles 2D array to uh, locate all of the tiles in their position. So we can extract a tile, uh, an actual tile object from our tile map like so. And next we can uh, extract the position of each tile based off of its X and Y index. So the um, X position is just going to be X times the tile size, which we specified as probably being 16. Uh, and then uh, y, the Y position is going to be Y times the tile size. And then we're going to cast those to floats because the pixel.v object is going to create a pixel.vec. Uh, and that function takes in uh, two floats. So finally, we just need to draw the uh, each tile to the window. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is create a matrix, which is the identity matrix, but moved by the position that we that we created earlier. Uh, and then we're going to take the style.sprite object, and we're going to draw it to the window with that matrix. And that should represent our entire draw function. So let's go back to our main.go file in our main function and start constructing our tile map. 
So the first thing we'll do is we'll set up a few variables. Uh, first, we'll set up the tile size, and that, as we mentioned before, that's going to be a 16 by 16. Next, we'll specify the map size, and that's going to be that's going to represent the bounds of our uh, grid of tiles. So we'll do 100 by 100 to start. We could configure it here, and then we'll create our tile slice, which is going to be specified by the map size. And then we need to create a for loop to loop over all of the x indices of our tiles slice. Uh, and then for each x indice of our tile slice, we actually need to make another slice because this is a 2D slice. Uh, and we'll also specify the capacity of that slice to be map size as well. Now we can construct our tile object and assign it back to our 2D tile slice. Uh, we haven't actually defined the different tile types, but uh, I'm just going to call this tile type zero. So grass is going to rep is going to be represented by a zero, uh, uint eight, uh, and then for the sprite, we're just going to get the uh, grass PNG from our sprite sheet and assign it here as well. So after all of this, we should have a, a 2D slice that holds our entire tile map. We just need to pass that into the uh, constructor function for our tile map now. So here we'll construct our tile map. I'm just going to call it tmap to keep it different from the name of the package, which was called put tile map. So we'll do tilemap.new, we'll pass in the tiles, we'll pass in the tile size, and assign it to the tmap variable. Now down below in our uh, world space draw code, uh, we can actually draw the tile map. We'll draw it to the window like so. Notably, we need to draw the tile map before we draw all of the people, uh, because the tile map needs to be rendered behind the people. In Pixel, when you draw things, you have to uh, specify the things in the background before the things in the foreground. So this will ensure that the tile map is drawn behind all of the people. All right, so I think we just need to do some imports back in our tile map package. And I think these are, this is all we need is Pixel and Pixel GL. And then I'm gonna run go generate and go run. We need to run go generate again because we need to repack our sprite sheet. Then I had a typo where I was missing a comma in our uh, um, tile construction of the struct. And then back in main, oh yeah, this should be tile map dot tile, tile map dot tile, and tile map dot tile. And then I've also forgotten to add in our tile map here. Sorry, add in our tile map package here. So I'll add that in like so. And then we had another error where I missed a comma again. Another error. Oh yeah. So our sprite sheet returns an error, so we should check that before we just start using it. We'll call this um, grass sprite. And then up above, we'll just do up above, we'll just do this. We'll we'll, we'll create a grass sprite object uh, and assign it to the sprite sheet dot get uh, grass dot png, and then we'll panic if there was an error. Here is our tile map. But look how slow that is. And the reason that that's slow is because we have an enormous number of draw calls that have to go to the GPU every single frame. Specifically, because we have a 100 by 100 tile map, we would have 10,000 different draw calls that have to go to the uh, GPU every single frame. So one simple optimization that we can make, instead of drawing every single tile individually to the GPU, is we can batch all of the tiles together into one draw call on the GPU. So let's work on doing that now. So in our tile map object, we'll specify a batch component, and we'll assign, and it'll just be a pointer to a pixel dot batch. And then in our constructor, we'll also pass in the batch object here, and then assign it to our tile map struct here. Next, we'll define a rebatch function, and the goal of this function is to rebatch the entire tile map into our pixel dot batch object that we specified in our struct. So I'm just going to copy the uh, drawing code from here because this is going to uh, closely resemble what our batch code is going to look like. So we still need to loop through all of the tiles, but instead of drawing them to the window, what we want to draw them to is to the tile bat or is to the batch. So now we'll just draw directly to the batch instead. So back in our draw function, uh, instead of drawing every single tile individually to the window, we'll just draw the uh, entire batch object to the window. And that'll kind of represent uh, us batching all of the data into one draw call and then drawing it to the GPU only once. And this is how that code looks. Notably, there's no matrix that we can assign here because we're drawing a, a batch, not a sprite. So back in our main.go file, we need to start using, or we need to construct the batch object, pass it into our tile map so it can start being used. So this line right here constructs our batch object. And how this works is uh, pixel.newBatch is the constructor function that Pixel has. Uh, we need to pass in this uh, triangle's data object, 
or rather a pointer to the triangles data object, uh, which represents, uh, will represent all of the triangles that we want to batch into the one draw call. Uh, finally, we need to add this sprite sheet dot picture to our batch object. Uh, and the reason that is, is because all sprites drawn to our batch object need to use the same sprite sheet uh, image. Now that our batch is created, we can pass it into our tile map constructor function. And then the last thing we have to do is we have to rebatch our tile map because it's never been batched before. Luckily, because none of the tiles in the tile map will ever change, uh, we only need to rebatch once. So we rebatch outside of the uh, game loop. Uh, and then in inside the game loop, we only have to draw the batch object. We don't have to draw any of the tiles anymore. All right, so let's run our code and see what happens. Cool. So here's our code running like before, uh, but now things are a lot smoother, and that's because our FPS has shot up significantly. Uh, and also you can tell now that the camera is attached to the uh, man without a hat. And then we can move the man with a hat uh, like before, but he's he's not attached to the camera anymore. We can also zoom in and out like before. Awesome. We've made some pretty good progress so far, but there's still lots more to do. I'll see you next time.